Hi everyone, this is Raj Shekhar. So today in this video, we are going to discuss why object oriented. Whenever you want to develop any software applications, we are having two approaches to develop the software applications. One is structured approach and one more is object oriented approach. Structured programming, object oriented programming. So if you consider structured programming, the languages under structured programming are like C, Pascal, Cobol, Fortran, all older languages. When you come to object oriented, we are having the languages like C++, Java, .NET, PHP. So all these languages are considered as object oriented programming languages. So when you are having structured programming like C language, then what's the need of going for object oriented? So that is a discussion we are going to do in this video. So let us consider a small scenario. Let us take, we are having three shapes like Like let us consider we are having a square, we are having a circle, we are having a triangle. Now, when you click on this symbol, the symbol should rotate some degree and should fill with some background color. For example, if I consider square, I want to fill this color with red. I want to fill this color with red. When you click on the symbol, I want to rotate some degree. Like example, like I want to rotate this one like a 60 degree and I want to fill this, fill the color with red. When you click on circle, I want to fill the color with the green. Then rotate some degree like 90 degree, something like that. Then when you click on triangle, I want to change the color to blue and rotate some degree like 100 degree, some exa, something, whatever the degree it may be. So when you click on the symbol, I want to change the color, I want to fill the color in this given symbol and I want to rotate some degree. So that is the task given to us. Then, now when I want to develop this application using structured approach. When you go for structured approach, our thinking starts with functionalities. What functions are required to solve this problem? So in our case, whenever you are clicking on the symbol, what are the functionalities we are doing? We are going to rotate some degree rotate the symbol by degree and fill color. These are the two functionalities what we are doing on the symbol. So when you go for structure approach, how to write the program here, we require two functions. When you go for structure, we have to go with two functions that is fill color then so for which symbol I should fill the color? So we'll pass the ID for the symbol. So for example, we can consider like the one is the one ID is given for square, two is for circle and three is for triangle. So based on the ID, we are going to fill the color here. Then we require one more function called as rotate. Where we take the ID of the symbol. And in this one, we'll write the code. Like how will you write? Here we'll check. If id is 1. So id 1 indicates it's a square. If it is square, I want to do some logic. Like I want to fill the color with red. Then if id is 2. If id is 2, then I want to fill the color with Green. If ID is if ID is three, I want to fill the color with blue. Like that, we are writing some code here. Like that, we are writing some code. Then now. Now, similar way, let us go with rotate. So here also rotate, we will check it here. If id equal to 1, do some logic. Do something to rotate. 
if id equal to 2 do something if id equal to 3 do something so now now here in this case when you go for structured approach so since i want to change the color and i want to rotate the symbol so we are going with two functionalities in the case of structured approach now like that we have created two functions one is fill color and one more is rotate similar way if i want to do the same application with object oriented so when you go for object oriented let us see what we can do so when you go for object oriented our thinking will be in the in the form of real time entities when you go for object oriented so what we have discussed in the last video like we think in the terms of real time entities so what are the real time entities here in this case we are having three they are one is square one is circle and one more is triangle so we take three classes here we think in the terms of real time entities so we go with three classes like a class square where we we put the functionalities inside the class. So in the case of object oriented, we take a class and the functionalities will go inside the class like rotate or we can say like change color, fill color and where we put the logic here for this we'll say color equal to red. Similar way, rotate, some logic inside this rotate, some logic inside this rotate. Similar way, we'll take one more class, class circle, where we go with the functionalities like fill color, where we'll say color equal to green and we'll go with rotate where we read some logic for rotating your symbol. Similar way we take one more class triangle where we go with the function fill color and we'll say color equal to blue then we'll go for the function rotate where we write some logic so this is the approach we follow when you go for object oriented now let us discuss what is the advantage of developing the code in object oriented in the form of classes now once you develop the application and once we submit this application to the client from that time we call it as maintenance phase. From that time we call it as what maintenance phase. Now let us suppose you have developed the application in structured approach using some C language or something. Then once we submit the application, then the then your project goes for maintenance phase. Then your application is maintenance phase. Now during maintenance time, the client has added one more symbol called as rhombus here. The client has added one more symbol rhombus. Okay. So, what are the numbers here? We have considered 1 for square, 2 for circle, 3 for triangle and let me take 4 for rhombus. So, when you click on this rhombus, I want to give some background color for this like pink. I want to give a background color pink. Then I want to rotate some degree. Then, what I need to do now in structure approach? We have to go back to this fill color and we have to write the code here. Like how to write the code? We'll say here, if id equal to 4. If id equal to 4. Then we'll say color equal to 
color equal to pink. Similar way, in the case of rotate function also, we are at something again code. If id equal to 4, do something. So this is our additional code. In this case, this is our additional code what we have written. So when you add some piece of code here, then what we need to do? We need to send the function for testing again. So when we have some add piece of code to this function, fill color or rotate, then we have to send this function for again testing. When you send it for testing, they'll test the complete function. Means whatever the code we have written before, that previous code will also get tested again. So if I had 100 new symbols, that means I need to test the previous code 100 times. So where the cost of testing will increase, then automatically the maintenance cost will also get increased. The meaning of cost is time or money. So when you go for structure approach, when the requirement changes or when the client adds new requirements, when you write the code for that new requirement, again we have to send this code for testing, where the cost is going to increase. When you come to this object oriented, what we need to do? Just we need to create one more new class, that's it. One more new class, that is rhombus. Rambus, where we just go with the functions, fill color and where we say color equal to pink. And one more function, rotate. So whenever the new requirement is added here, just we are going to create a new class and we are going to write the code in the new class. We are not going to touch our previous classes here. So whatever the testing happened on the previous classes, we can keep it as it. So when the new requirement comes, we'll develop the code only for that new requirement and we'll send only this code for testing. We won't touch the previous code. So that is the advantage of going for object oriented. Got it? Right. So what is why object oriented? The main reason why we go for object oriented in order to reduce the cost of testing and maintenance. Why object oriented? It is used to reduce the cost of testing and maintenance. So in the 1980s we had only one approach, before 1980s we had an approach called a structured approach where they used to develop the application using structured approach. Then the people started thinking, since the cost of testing and maintenance is going more, so they want to reduce the cost of testing and maintenance. So with that only the object oriented has been evolved in 1980s. So that's about object oriented, why we are entering into this object oriented programming. So that's about in this video. And in the next video, we are going to start off with Java introduction where we see about Java and the versions of Java. So please subscribe to our videos to get the latest videos. Thank you very much. Thank you all.